that so that um, when you have something to say or ask a question, you can unmute, but right now, please mute. So good evening, everybody. I'm Marilyn London, membership chairman and board member of the Friends of the Sterling Grove Library. And I welcome you tonight to another fabulous movie that Shelley has chosen for us. So um, for those of you who are friends of the library, thank you so very much for supporting us so that we are able to have Shelley with us as well as some of the other wonderful um, facilitators that we are able to ha have on board. And uh, it is because of your support. So thank you so very much. If anybody is here um, for the first time or as a guest, welcome. And uh, we hope that you like the program. Check us out on our website at www.sterlingfriends.org and become a friend as well. $10 a year and you have access to all of our fabulous programs. And as Jackie says, it's the best deal in town and she's right. So um, do that. And we are 530, 40 members. I mean, in a crazy amount. So we have to be doing something right and you'll want to be part of us. So please join us. Um, I hope you're all getting your newsletters. And if you aren't, please let us know so that we could correct it and you can have access to everything that we are doing. Um, I'm not gonna go over the programs with you because uh, you have them at your fingertips and you could go over them yourself. And um, right now, let us go back to Shelley and take us away and to Italy, but it's, it's, uh, it's a very cosmopolitan, program and uh, different cultures. So take us away and we can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Marilyn. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Thank you for coming this evening. Okay, so we're into Shun Li and the poet, or in Italian, it is Io sono li, which means they are there. They are there. Uh, it is from 2011. And it was directed by a young man. His name is Andre Segre. Uh, he is, uh, he earned, he's an interesting character. I have to give you some of his background because it really puts this film into context. Uh, he earned a PhD in sociology, focusing on endangered social groups with an emphasis on immigration into Italy, immigration into Italy. He founded a group called Zaleb, which hosts participatory video and documentary workshops in intercultural contexts and geographically or socially marginalized situations. Uh, he is uh, specifically a documentary director and his first film, which was entitled Lo Sterminio del Popoli Zingari, or The G Gypsy Extermination, was a documentary about the gypsies in Nazi concentration camps. He has since made many more documentaries that promote cross-cultural knowledge and understanding, uh, including uh, one that he did just before he did this film, which was called Pescatori a Georgia, Fishermen in Georgia, uh, which helped inspire the making of this film. This was his first his first uh, non-documentary, his first feature film, uh, for which he won he won a number of prizes, but the one that is uh, probably most important at the London Film Festival, he won what, what is known as the Sadyajit Rai Award, which is Sadyajit Rai was a very famous Indian director uh, and a, a world famous director, one of the most famous world directors. And he won the award. It was given. It's given to the director whose first feature best captures the artistry expressed by Sajit Rai's own vision, uh, which involves realism, uh, which this film gives us uh, some of. Anyway, Shun Li and the poet is a poignant, 
and meditative film that explores the experience of immigrants and the universal human need for connection among them and belonging. The performances by Zhao To as Shun Li and Rada Serbegia as Bepi are particularly noteworthy. And the film's stunning cinematography and attention to detail help to create a rich and immersive cinematic experience, which I hope you had. Uh, the film examines issues from cultural alienation to xenophobia, exploitation, splintered families, and of course, as I said, the universal yearning for affection. Uh, and it is set in this uh, lagoon town or lagoon of Georgia, a small city, is a small city island on the Venetian lagoon where the water itself becomes an allegory for the swirling emotions and the ebb and flow of, of the life of this village. Uh, the multi-ethnic uh, outskirts of Rome and the Veneto is a region that underwent extremely fast economic growth uh, in the early 2000s. And it's still going through that, which has gone, it went from being a land of emigration to one of immigration in a very short time. A lot of the young people had gone from that area, had gone to other parts of Italy, had left Italy altogether. And uh, there was an influx of Chinese into that area. Uh, it was, and, and what, what you see in the film is very close to the reality of how the Chinese came into that part of Italy. You know, it's interesting. We as a country outsourced a lot of work to these countries, to China, to those places, and Chinese and Chinese immigrants who wanted, to, Chinese people who wanted to get out of China uh, did go through a sort of uh, situation. Uh, it was much like the Vietnamese coming here and much like the, the South Koreans coming here in the late 50s and early 60s, uh, where they had a network of businesses and people that would bring them in. Uh, they were undocumented, but they worked in the textile factories and then started as the Chinese, as Italians started to desert different areas and sell their businesses, the Chinese would buy them up. They were a natural way to get people to come in and work these businesses. Uh, and in the opening scene, it becomes that explicit. You know, we we see over the screen before we see anything that the uh, uh, we're told of the poet Q Wan, and uh, we see Shun Li placing the flower candle into the bathtub as she recites one of his poems. Uh, what's interesting is I love this opening because we have no idea where we are. We have no idea where we are. We're not in context yet. We don't know we're in Italy. All we see is a, a an Asian woman putting a candle in a bathtub and a crude guy walking into the bathroom very crudely. And uh, he begins, you know, he looks at what they're doing and he just says, you're not in China anymore. You're in Italy. And he's, he's you know, dissing uh, their ritual. And yet... He goes into the other room and sits down to the men's ritual of playing mahjong, something that they took from China. So it is an ironic moment, you know, if you look at it that way. And they're, they're fighting over the mahjong game. And then we see Shun Li get up and walk through this maze of rooms. And we see how these people are living and finally into uh, the factory that she works in, this huge factory of uh, textile workers, and it is near Rome. And uh, we find out that she's slowly paying off these brokers who brought her to China uh, and hopefully saving money so she can bring her young son to join her. And we hear in narration her writing the letters to her son. Uh, and suddenly, just as suddenly, she's transferred to work as a bartender in an Asteria, a small pub in 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 the uh, in Chiaja. Uh and the first person she meets there is another Chinese young woman, Leon, Leon, and Leon, who though we don't know what she does, we can only surmise because she goes out in the evenings. 
Um, and we don't know which, but she, she also takes beautiful pictures of the area, which she shares with Sean Lee. Uh, you know, one might suspect is she a prostitute? Is she, what is she doing at night? Where is she going? We have no idea. Uh, the Asteria is, and the Asteria itself is the hangout of the local fishermen, including Beppe, who is uh, uh, a handsome, rustic, old Slav immigrant, uh, who is nicknamed the poet uh, for his, because he makes up these little rhymes for everyone. Uh, we meet the other denizens of the bar, Cope, his best friend, uh, the counselor, and uh, Mustache. We see them all sitting around, uh, as well as we then see also uh, Devi, who is a crude, misogynistic, racist bully, uh, and is the picture and, and physically fits the part very well. Uh, Shun Li's initial encounter at the bar uh, immediately presents a barrier. She's trying to learn Italian, uh, you know, and we have to remember that in Italy, there are so many different dialects. And now she's here faced with, you know, she's in Rome, she's learning Italian there, and now she's forced to learn Italian here. And the men joke with her, uh, which already, you know, creates a sense of alienation for her. What are they talking about? What are they joking about? But these guys, you know, Beppe's friends are a little more friendly, uh, at least. And Beppe's initial attempt to order a coffee with uh, prune liqueur, when he comes in, he goes, prunia, and she just, she does, she just gives him the coffee, highlights a little moment of humor and frustration between the two of them. But uh, he teaches her. Uh, and he's intrigued by her presence and tries to bridge the gap uh, eventually by sharing more conversations with her. As they continue their discussions at the bar, you know, this gentle friendship develops between them. He learns about her background, their cultural exchanges become a way to understand each other's worlds. Uh, and they learn that their worlds may be physically far apart, uh, but emotionally, spiritually, they're pretty close together. Uh, you know, Beppe being an outsider himself from Yugoslavia, uh, he has an empathy for Shun Li's situation and how both lived under communist rule. Uh, they discussed that. And, you know, he says, Mao Zedong, she says he's not there anymore, fortunately. Uh, and she tells him about her father and grandfather and great-grandfather who were all fishermen. Uh, and both the distance from their children, one physically distant, the other having emotional problems with his son, not wanting to go with him, even though his son wants him to settle down with them. And while Shun Li is yearning for her son, and, and who knows an immigrant better than another immigrant, uh, as we see. You know, in this situation. And while she yearns for her son, as I said, his son wants him to move to Mestre, which is another city, which is a city. Uh, we watch Shun Li as she and Leon take the ferry toward Venice. Uh, there's a, a you know, it's a, it's again a very ambiguous scene. Leon tells her stay, go into Venice, uh, and uh look around and she gets off the boat, she goes to the beach, and she's practicing what looks like Tai Chi on the beach. But she's also doing it looking off into the ocean. And Leon has one of these faces. It's a sad face. It's, it's uh, Her look is always distant as she faces across the water to the sea, perhaps yearning, yearning for what she left behind. We have no idea. She remains a mystery to us uh, until we find out at the end what she does. But Shun Li goes on to explore Venice, wandering the city by boat. I mean, the cinematography in this film is wonderful uh, in, in what it captures. Uh, she discovers a new world. It's in a sense, again, an irony. As an Asian, she becomes Marco Polo in reverse. She is a Marco Polo in reverse discovering Italy the way he discovered China. Uh, I, I sort of love that. It sort of hit me as I watch it. Uh, on their boat ride along the lagoon, uh, later on, 
she takes the boat ride with uh, Beppe uh, and to his fishing hut. And he explains to her what the hut is. And the two bond further, discussing their past and Chun-Li's yearning to be with her son. Uh, it is an emotional moment uh, for the two of them. You know, it is again, ambiguous. What is he feeling? I, you know, there is an emotional bond between the two, but it's, it's much more of just two souls uh, coming together. Uh, but their innocent relationship, uh, a bond that has transcended two very different, yet not at all distant cultures, bias and racism fuel rumors that Shun Li, you know, they're saying what, what the, these Chinese, Shun Li only wants to marry Beppe and take his possessions. Uh, and even Shun Li's bosses want her to cut off her friendship with him. Uh, as she tells Beppe, they can no longer be friends. He is saddened. Uh, he cannot attend the festival of the poet Qian. Uh, and and, and it just just to backtrack a little bit, you know what we what we see is we get a little more insight into how uh, the Italians are feeling about this. There is that one scene in the barber shop with the character known as the counselor. And he's talking, you know, it is 2011, again, puts us into context. Uh, and he's he's reading the paper and it's, it's again, misinformation, if you will, how he's saying Obama is giving money to the Chinese. And for every uh, American he gives money to, he gives five Chinese people money so that they can come here. You know, he says they're taking out businesses. This is the new empire, as he says it, which you know, a lot of people want to believe. Uh, and China is stretching out, but this is not a political, this is not political in that way. This is about people who want to get away from China. Anyway, as she tells him, she can no longer be his friend because even uh, the Chinese want to cut off her friendship. They say, you're giving us a bad name. People now are, are getting back at us. Uh, and she tells him, he said, we can see the sadness in him. Uh, uh, and, and we see that very beautiful scene, uh, again, where she's putting the candle flower into the water uh, and she's reciting a poem asking, if different roads can come together, acute is remorse for the lost way. Acute is remorse for the lost way. Uh, she's lamenting her relationship with Beppe. Uh, and he is walking alone along the bank of the lagoon, walking home. And it is a sad moment in the film, the two of them becoming more and more distant. Uh, and Beppe, confronted by Devis, uh, finally reacts violently and is beaten up violently, while Shun Li can only watch in despair. We see that great shot in the window. Uh, that double image of he and Shun Li. Uh, we see her leave the lagoon. Uh, she leaves a letter. Uh, she mails a letter to Beppe saying that she has to go. Uh, we see her go back to work in a factory somewhere in Italy, eventually and eventually being reunited with her son. Eventually being reunited with her son, who, you know, she's, she couldn't be happier. He's a, you know, cute kid. He wants to go to school. She wants to, you know, she wants to get him an education. Uh, we see hope in this, in this situation. Uh, but she returns to the lagoon. She goes back and uh, she wants to see Beppe and she bumps into Copy, Copy his friend, and she learns of Beppe's death and how they tried to find her and uh, because they wanted to see, wanted to send her a letter. Uh, and he tells him that she, he did go to live with his son, but he had gotten very sick and passed away. Uh, and uh, he leaves it a letter saying, I hope that you will give me, uh, he, uh, he left her his hut and he will, she will give him a send off much like Qi Wan, the poet, in the spirit of Q Wan, the poet, and she and Kope go off and they burn the hut. 
uh, you know, it's like a Viking funeral, if you will. Uh, but it's it's a touching moment as we pull away and we see it burning. Uh, it is a beautifully poetic uh, and transcendent ending uh, to an original, what I feel is an original poetic and deeply human approach to the subject of immigration. Uh, the actress... Tao Zhao imbues her character with a quiet, softly spoken dignity and sincerity, uh, as well as melancholy, uh, balanced by uh, Serbegia's Cerve kindness and empathy, his character's kindness and empathy, his, his, you know, his sense of humor, uh, his dignity, his wanting dignity, which is eventually destroyed uh it is you know it it they're two great performances from my point of view anyway the cinematography again i comment on it it often uses a muted color palette reflecting the character's isolation and longing uh some of the scenes might be dominated by the gray the rain the gray the blues the browns there are pops of color you know when when um uh, Shun Li walks along the banks in Venice with the red umbrella uh, that stands out. You know, we get these little pops of color, uh, you know, and and uh, perhaps to highlight a moment of connection or a dream of a different life in cases. The use of framing is also very symbolic in the film. We get these tight close-ups of Shun Li's face, uh, which emphasize her emotional state. Uh, also of Beppe. While wide, wide shots of the vast lagoon, you know, depict the feeling of being lost or dwarfed by the circumstances around them. Uh, and then there are moments where the camera focuses on close-ups of a lot of faces. We see faces of old Italians. I mean, you can map their faces. Uh, you know, he, he, really, he really does a beautiful job. It's, it's documentary-like. A lot of his shooting of the landscapes of the city and the, the people, landscapes and the faces contrasting it uh, is very documentary-like. Uh, the older Italians, again, in contrast to the younger Chinese, uh, we have the, you know, there is one scene where they're in church. Again, an ironic scene, you know, uh, what, what the priest is saying and how they really act. Uh, there is the beauty of the lagoon. Venice and the surrounding landscape are a constant presence in the film. The architecture and beauty of Italy stands in deep contrast to Shun Li's life in Italy as an immigrant, living in shared rooms, enclosed shared rooms, working in a crowded factory, her life consigned to mostly being in the bar and being in that room. Uh, water is a recurring motif in the film. Uh, the lagoon can be seen as a physical barrier uh, that separates Shun Li from her desired life. However, it can also be a symbol of connection as it's the source of a uh, fisherman's livelihood. And we see that too in documentary-like fashion when Kopi on his last day goes out uh, with the fishermen. Uh, we see their lives. It's a and it's a place where Shun Li and the poet uh, share some of their most tender moments. In the film, we also see how life must exist in an area that floods over. I love it when the streets become flooded, even the bar. Uh, but life goes on. Business goes on. It's as if it's a way of life. They expect this to happen. Uh, and even they, they even dredge uh, the lagoon at one point. Uh, you know, it's, it's so the, the cinematography and the music. I love the music in the film too. It's occasional. Uh, it is somewhat mournful at times, uh, capturing the mood of the film. Uh, I have to tell you, Zhao Tao, who plays Shun Li, started out as a dancer and is now uh, a very in an internationally renowned actress as a result of this film back in 2011. Uh, she earned a degree in Chinese folk dance from the Beijing... Uh, dance academy and she was teaching uh, at a college she was teaching choreography and dance at a college when she was discovered 
by Chinese leading art film director. His name is Jia Zhangqi. Uh, he's, he's again, a very famous director, and she soon became his muse, starring in several of his films, uh, among them uh, Still Life, uh, which was the winner of the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival, uh, and they were married uh, in 2012, the year after the film was made, and she won for her performance in this film, she won the equivalent of the Italian Oscar, the David D. Donatello Award for Best Actress uh, for this film. Uh, so she was she was recognized internationally. She's recognized a great deal in China uh, for her roles. And and Rada uh, Sherbegia, uh Beppe, uh, he is a poet. He is actually a poet in real life. He is a singer songwriter. And he is also one of the most well-known actors from the former Yugoslavia. He was a Yugoslavian immigrant. Uh, after graduating from the Academy of Dramatic Arts in Zagreb, he found success on the stage and screen uh, and when the Yugoslav Wars, when the Baltic Wars led to the dissolution of Yugoslavia in the early 90s, he and his family fled to Serbia and eventually he emigrated to the United States. Uh, he, he's, he's lived here on and off for many years, uh, and he started he started in he started working in Hollywood productions. He's had winning roles in popular films and TV series. He's appeared on TV in the United States as well. Uh, he's uh, he's had many noteworthy performances uh, in his in his extremely prolific career. Uh, he was in an award winning Macedonian film which I hope to bring to you. Uh, it's entitled Before the Rain. Uh, it is a beautiful and very cryptic film that does, uh, it deserves a discussion uh, for which he won Best Actor Award again at the Venice Film Festival. Uh, he was in several films he worked. He was in Stanley Kubrick's last film, Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, and he was in a post-Holocaust film called Fugitive Pieces in 2007, for which he won Best Actor at the Rome Film Festival. So he's a very accomplished uh, actor. You could tell by their performances. These are two very accomplished actors. Uh, the other men at the bar, they're all actors. Uh, they weren't, you know, just real people. Uh, they were actors. Uh, the only non-actors are the fishermen when they go to sea, uh, and naturally the textile workers in the factory where she worked. But even the Chinese, the bosses, they were actors as well. I like the young man. Uh, he, the young man is ambivalent. Uh, he's the one that brings her, her son. Uh, and we learn in the end when she said, you know, because she probably, she's trying to figure out who put up the money to bring her son. And uh, he said, I don't know, I can't tell you. And when she goes back to see Beppe, she goes to see Leon, who disappeared, who disappeared, but Leon left the note with money. And that's where the money went for her to get back her son. Leon was, if you remember, there was a scene where Leon tells her uh, the lagoon washes out, the tide washes out to sea, but not everything washes out. Some things wash back in. Uh, and it's as if, you know, it's almost symbolic uh, because of what she does uh, for Shun Li. Uh, and we don't know what happened to Leon. You know, it's she was sad, she was depressed. Who knows? Who knows? It can only be in our mind. Uh, but that's, I thought it was a, a beautifully photographed film. Uh, I mean, there were several, you know, it was as if there were documented photos coming to life in many ways. Uh, the, the actors, the music, it all works together. But it's all a universal tome on immigration and uh, an understanding of immigrants and how a society can turn against them. Uh, with rumors, with misinformation. Uh, you know, we see it here. We see it here. I think it's an important film because it reflects our own situation uh, in many ways. And I think we have to be cognizant of it. Uh, 
you know, these are people who who are escaping uh, another country that is oppressive to them and coming here. And isn't that what we're supposed to be all about? Anyway, I, I digress too much. Uh, let us get into the conversation. And uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the film. So who wants to go first? Do I see a hand? All that, is that your hand going up already? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jump right I in just have, I Before I start, I do want to start with the fact, the end of the film, I was in the recliner. I was, <laughs> I was exhausted. I had my tissues. I couldn't get out of the recliner. It was so poignant. And so true to life of what the immigrants are experiencing today in our country, in other countries. I was an immigrant when I was a little girl and came over. And all this business about the debt that the Chinese have to pay off in New York City, in the Chinese restaurants, there are so many that are still paying it off. And what was interesting in the film is what was brought to mind is that the boss said to her that she would have to start all over if she just if she continued with Peppy, yes. right? Which broke my heart. And a funny scene to me was to see the bully in the front row with the church. Yeah, <laughs> there he is in the front row, the bully of all people to be there. But the connection, just the the facial expressions, the eyes, they didn't have to speak. Pepe and Sean Lee. There was just that connection that was so, so effervescent. You could feel it. And I love the ending of the scene where he, Pepe's walking over the bridge and she had lit the, can the floral candle. And there he is walking over the bridge and the candle is like going under the bridge. I thought maybe he would see it, but didn't. I thought yeah. that was very interesting too. Good. That purposely yeah. he did not see it. Mm -hmm. I just say bravo. I loved it. Couldn't <laughs> be any better. Thank you, Olin. Thank you. Who's next? I don't see any hands. Am I gonna go like this? <laughs> Deborah, you gotta unmute. Yeah, I just wanted to make one comment about Leanne because when she went to the beach. Um, I really thought it was showing the possibilities that would happen to young people who immigrate that way and are so isolated and alone. I thought she was going to commit suicide. Well, um, that's what I was getting I at. No uh, yeah. When I didn't yeah. want, I didn't want to give closure to it, but I was suggesting it when I said oh. we don't know what happens to her. Oh. Uh, I think that's it's a possibility because right. she left her the money. You know, yeah. and and she just went. I mean, I think she was leading a an absolutely miserable life, uh, and I think she was. I think she was a prostitute. I think that's what she was doing. I think that's what they had her doing uh, to pay off uh, her debt. And yeah. it it was just you know, and here she was. She was a creative person taking pictures. She's standing there, constantly looking off into the distance. And and when she does tell her. You know, the lagoon washes things out and not everything, you know, is washed out that she would eventually go out with the tide. And uh, it, was, it was so different than Leanne, uh, Sean Lee, who was very alone and isolated, but had something to to work for. To yes. Live for. You yeah. know, Leanne looked just so empty. Yes. There's nothing there. Yeah, yeah. But yet she spiritually, you know, bonded with Shun Li. I mean, I love it when Shun Li is upset over the breakup that she has to go through with, with Beppe and she holds her and, you know, tries to comfort her. Uh, there is a sisterhood uh, involved in that. I thought it was very touching, very yeah. touching. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, who's next? Who's next? I, I, I'm looking, I'm looking straight at, who am I looking straight at, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> you got to us before we got our hand raised up. <laughs> we liked it. We agree with you about the photography. Um, 
I think one thing that was really interesting was that at the end, there was humanity in all of the people because they didn't have to take that money and bring her son over. They could have just taken that money and whatever happened to Leanne happened to her. And I actually thought that was very telling that they took the money that was left and they brought the son over, which actually showed some humanity in those people. Yeah, oh, I think, and I think it was the young man. I think it was the young man that did it because he brought the son. You know, he brought him. So obviously, he he went from the lagoon. He came back up to wherever wherever she was. Uh, and you know, in contrast to the boss, the guy who ran the restaurant, and wouldn't even give her half a day off to buy something for her son, if you remember. Uh, yeah. she asked for a half a day off and he said, no, you can't have it now. Uh, he just rejected it out of hand. Uh, he asked, how old is your son? Thinking, okay, maybe he'll relent. And no, he doesn't. Uh, yet the young man, I think, felt for her, uh, and her situation. So yes, I think it does represent a lot of humanity among these people. Not everybody is bad, uh, in this network, so to speak, mm -hmm. because it is a human trafficking network. In a yep. sense, it, it is. It is. Uh, who's next? Who's next? I'm Come up on. again. Arlette again? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe when the water was entering the restaurant and slushing <laughs> away. As long as you had a pair of boots, you could continue. But what a scene. So different. Something we don't experience. Something no. I don't even think about. In reality. Okay. Well, you, you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had enough with water. I had four floods in 2017. Thank you very much. Right, right. So we can identify with some of that. Definitely. Thank you, all at uh, Marilyn. <laughs> um, watching this just made me realize that immigration problems are are everywhere, and the people, the Italians, were certainly not open. And it was like they're as xenophobic as I think I think they are anywhere, including this country. And they're always afraid that whoever is immigrating in their country is going to again, you know, rise too high and take their and, and it's really interesting because we're a country of immigrants and we have seen what immigrants have done mm -hmm. to make the country so amazing. And and they we have the same um, hostility towards immigration today. It's just crazy because there are some countries I think that when they do get immigrants come to them, they actually help them assimilate. And I think these are probably the best and the happiest of countries. Maybe the Scandinavian countries. I I don't know. They don't seem to have this fear. Uh, does anybody have an idea of what kind of well yeah let me let me weigh in on that one of the, one of the things we have to realize especially the european countries and and uh, scandinavia aside because they didn't do it as much as these other countries in fact i don't know if they really did it at all uh they were mostly emigrates to other countries from scandinavia but they colonized they colonized italy spain germany France, they were colonizing countries. Uh, and because they were colonizing countries and because they, they spent, you know, however long, 100 years, 150 years, 200 years, pulling out the best of the resources from those countries, when it came time in the modern era, it was payback. And the payback is the colonists said we we can't live here and they were given they were given dual passports many of them uh some from africa uh many from africa like the french have to deal with a lot of their colonies you know morocco uh, uh algeria especially uh so they have to deal with with that uh and it is very difficult uh there was you know but there's an influx uh, into Scandinavia and they're welcoming because they're not heavily populated. 
and they need these people to help them work. Yes, there are problems. There are still problems because they're different. You know, it's always the other. It's always dealing with the other. But they, they tend to have more social welfare programs for these people. Right. Uh, Italy, in the last 20 years, has had a tremendous influx from both Africa and Asia. So they're dealing with that. It seems Italy has one of the largest Chinese populations in Europe. Uh, you know, yeah, they do, uh, because there are a lot of them are textile workers, you know, and the Africans who come there, uh, you know, they, they really weren't getting ahead. They were selling on the street. Uh, you can go there now, you can go to France now, and you could see those who were colonized before now working in these countries, selling handbags, selling souvenirs on the street. This is how they survive. Uh, here, we're not about colonization. We're about, supposedly, our gates are open for the oppressed, okay? That's what the dream was, and that's why they come here. So, you know, what happened to that dream is the question. <laughs> you know, okay, also, Deborah? Also, Shelley, I think um, we were in um, Sweden and Copenhagen this year. I think that people come there because they have great health care and education, yeah. but they have a pretty strict quota system, I believe. Yes, they do. People they will let in. You know, yes, they do. Small, they're a small country and they're very careful about who they let in. Yeah, and they, they and and those that they let in, I know, you know, among the Persian population, among the Iranians, and there are Iranians, there are Persians, there are uh, you know, from the Arab, they they are now taking part in the government, uh, they're getting the education, uh, because of that social welfare system. Right. It is it is a valuable system. You're absolutely right. Uh so it it is interesting. Yeah, when we were there, we saw very few black people anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of most of the because mostly the Africans are, are coming up uh through Italy. You know, they they're going up through Lampedusa, they're going up, if you remember the film Terra Firma, that how they were coming into the country. Uh so it's it's uh that's why they go to Italy. In fact, there is a movie that was nominated this year for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Feature, uh called uh, Io Capitano. Uh and it's about a young man, a young man's journey from Africa, uh, and how difficult it is for them. Uh there are there are several directors in Italy that have been doing this stuff about uh immigration into the country and trying to make Italians aware we have to do something. It's not about repelling these people, it's about how can we how can we work with them? How can we, you know, improve the situation? Uh thank you, Deborah. Who else? Oh, Barbara, Barbara Tate. Well, I had two things. Um I love the performance of uh, Davis, the uh, the bully. I thought he was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and that whole scene about where he had seduced or, you know, practically raped some woman, and then he's sitting in church with his wife and the kids. There's no idea what to do with the, the child. And the other is about the girl, Leon. The first time she went to the beach and took her clothes off to do Tai Chi, I was sure she was going to go in the water and of kill course. herself. And the second time, I was even more sure that that was what she had intended, that she was, you know, when she went into the Tai Chi, instead of going in and drowning herself, I was kind of surprised. I think that with the film, what, what the director was saying is these are, these were, this was, you know, her desperate, first of all, it was her desperate tie to her homeland, Tai Chi. Yes. Uh, and she constantly looks off into the distance. It's and 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 eventually probably feeling I'm I'm lost. She was lost. And, and she looked uh, very sad. Yeah, she was. I mean, we saw her wandering out at night, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in dark clothes and you know, yeah. and figuring, you know, we could figure out sort of what she was doing because she wasn't working in a bar. We don't know what she was doing, it's not explained. And obviously, she made a good deal of money. In order to pay off uh, Shunley's debt, for the child. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, that I think he was intentionally leading us to that point. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Come on, there's got to be somebody. Nobody has anything to say. You just watched the movie? Didn't move you? Didn't make you feel like anything? <laughs> <laughs> Shelly, I can, I can say something. Yeah, uh, Dora. I, I saw this scene where they are like out in the in the water in this in this uh, hut. I don't know how how to call yeah, it. Yeah, fisherman's hut. The fisherman's fisherman's hut. yeah. Because it it showed like there was a a yearning from each other that they wanted a like a beautiful friendship. I I never thought about like it was a, another kind of love, even though his friend decided that no, this uh, he's uh, He's uh, having sex with her, and this is he's taking advantage of her in, in a different way of looking at, at things. And at the end, that she uh, puts fire into that into that same place, it's like showing that she's so hurt, and and that he asked for a funeral, like the poet. That, that she decided to burn it. And I don't know, it, it, it was very emotional, that part. I, I thought it was very emotional. It was, it was, yes. it was. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Linda. Well, another part that moved me um, that I thought was horrible was when she asked her boss to have some time off to buy the birthday gift for her son mm -hmm. and he denied it yeah and I, that was very upsetting yeah i mean because it, it leads you as i said it leads it, it led you to feel like okay he's saying well how old is your son and uh you know she says how old he is and uh you figure okay maybe he's going to break down and let it go right. for a couple but of he hours. no can't now can't now no right. No, very strict. Uh, it was it was it was a a, a sad moment for her. Uh, I I think you know the 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 film you know hits on so many things, but I think the the way the film was made, you know, because it it, it is almost like a hybrid. We get so much footage that feels documentary like, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, covering the city, the textile factory, the shots of Venice. Uh, all of it, you know, we see it through her eyes. Uh, Venice, she goes under the bridge, under the bridge of size. She, you know, she's she's seeing Venice for the first time, and mm -hmm. it's it's wonderful. You know, she's the explorer. She's the explorer. She is the immigrant, but she is also the explorer coming back to a place that uh, once came to them. You know, and they even make a joke about it. If you remember, the men in the cafe were making a joke that Marco Polo taught him how to cook, <laughs> you know, and it's really the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all of these things, you know, he doesn't even realize, the counselor doesn't even realize in a drunken moment when he says to Cope, he says, uh, tomorrow there's going to be fireworks. <laughs> uh, and fireworks were another thing the Chinese gave to Marco Polo. That's right. So all of these, you know, it's th these are ironic things. This whole relationship of China and Italy because Italy was the first to go to China from Europe. So we get this, you know, this whole feeling, you know, if we think about it, if we think about it. Uh, Deborah, did you have your hand up? I did. Yeah, I, I did. I just wanted to say about the uh, the acting. Shen Li, I was so taken with, here is this young woman alone in this horrible situation, but she's able to reach out to everybody. She's talking to everybody. She's yeah. joking with everybody. She's laughing in her as she's learning the language. She's participating as much as possible, which was really pretty amazing, you know, because somebody in that position could become very depressed like Leanne and just withdraw. Yes, sure. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, if you, you get a chance, I mean, she, she has made some remarkable Chinese films, uh, that are, uh, you know, really interesting. They're, they're, uh, you know, specifically Chinese, but her roles in them 
are fascinating. Uh, she goes through transformations that are incredible. And once she even dances, uh, and she is a beautiful dancer. Uh, so it, it's, uh, you know, which I will eventually, you will get to see with me. Uh, because I think oh, there are films that, that will, will be, you know, all worthy of, of uh, discussions, their cinematography. They are by Gia Zhangki, who is one of the foremost directors in the world. Uh, so we will see that. Anyone else? Anyone else I, have anything? Someone Again, was, all it. Good. Well, uh, the the young woman that just spoke, I have to say that when Shun Li went to work at the bar the first time, and she was told just, you don't have to understand what they're saying in the beginning. And she had, grazie, and with a smile, grazie, over and over again. It was just, whoever's looking at her, who's who's there as a patron, will definitely connect with her, even though she can't quite communicate at that point. That was lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Well, I, I, uh, so I, I, I thank you for your participation, especially the usual suspects. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, for, thank you for pitching in. Uh, so, okay. So next month, uh, next month, in two weeks, yeah. in two weeks, we'll be back and uh, very, I, another, another terrific film. I mean, you know, uh, you know, the, the theme, you know, this month is, I call it the searchers. Uh, it's about journeys across worlds and cultures. And this was certainly one of them. And the next journey we'll see is really a journey, uh, almost an epic journey. Uh, it's entitled like cowboys, uh, from France. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what's going to be interesting about it is that within the French culture, you will see another culture. And within that culture, journeying out into the world, it is about a father and son who will, uh, and a missing daughter, uh, and they will venture out into the world to hopefully find that daughter uh, and come into contact with another world. Uh, at least the son <laughs> will. Uh, and it is, it is a very surprising movie. It, it goes from France it goes to uh, several countries in Europe, uh, makes its way across uh, to North Africa. Uh, and uh, it is a journey that lasts uh, some 10 or 12 years. And uh, it is, it's wonderfully done. The music, the acting, I think is again superlative. Uh, and there'll be a surprise cameo in the film mm -hmm. in Lake Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And of course you could see it on, on Canopy. Uh, I think it is also available on uh, Amazon. So I hope you do get a chance to see it. And we'll look forward to having that discussion in two weeks. In two Absolutely. Weeks Thank you, Shelley. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you for being here.